Nationally, about 120,000 people are waiting for a potentially life-saving organ transplant. And on average, 22 people die each day while waiting. Some of the patients who end up on donor waiting lists are those who have cardiac conditions that can't be improved with better diet and exercise. So how close are we to ending transplant lists? Here to discuss some new hope is Dr. Joshua Hare, cardiologist and founding director of the Stem Cell Institute at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Hare. It's so great to have you here. Thank you for having me. So you have been called one of the pioneers of using stem cell research to treat cardiac issues. How promising is stem cell research proving to be in this field? I find it very promising, and our latest uh, results that we're publishing in about two weeks in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology support that promise. Fantastic. Now, you've also very recently done some research into a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy. Yes. First of all, tell us what this condition is exactly and who it normally affects. So dilated cardiomyopathy is the second uh, cause, the second biggest cause of congestive heart failure. The biggest are people who've had a heart attack. But although it's the second biggest cause, it still accounts for about 50% of heart transplants. Wow. And the reason for that is that it affects people of a broader age, inclu including children. So we are, uh, pediatric cardiologists are dealing with this in infants and kids and teenagers. So this is largely a genetic disease? It's, ca um, it's caused by either a genetic problem or an inflammatory problem, or in some cases both. And so then why has it only been able to be treated with, tr mostly able, able to be treated with transplants thus far? It's felt that it's progressive. So there's an injury to the heart and it can be uh, staved off with medicines for a while, but eventually the injury to the heart will take over. The heart, it's called dilated cardiomyopathy because the heart gets big and round and inefficient and the, and the people who have it get congestive heart failure. And so the current treatments are just to keep it going as long as possible with medicine until a transplant can right. be done? Uh, well, first medicines, mm -hmm. chronic medicines for the rest of the patient's life. There's a new development in the field which are left ventricular assist devices. These are mechanical pumps that have to be surgically implanted. But they are really, and especially in young people, thought of as bridges to transplant as opposed to permanent devices. So obviously none of that is ideal. Tell us about your stem cell therapy research here. So the idea of the stem cell therapy is to actually repair the primary damage and perhaps even cause the heart to grow new heart muscle cells that are healthier. And ultimately what we hope is that we can reverse that remodeling, take that big round heart and shrink it back down to a normal size. Were you able to try this on any human patients yet? We've just completed a study called the Poseidon DCM study. DCM stands for dilated cardiomyopathy. And uh, we've done about six clinical trials in our uh, center, and this was the most successful result. So we had a better result with dilated cardiomyopathy than with a previous study in patients who had a heart attack before. So when you say it was the most successful result, what, what did that mean? That meant that the heart was cured after the stem cell th ther therapy? Rather? We always hesitate to use the word oh, cure in okay. an early <laughs> study. The more studies are required. But 50% of the patients who got cells from a, a donor mm -hmm. had a recovery that took them out of the range of having cardiomyopathy. We use a number called ejection fraction, and 50% of the patients went above 40%, which is the cutoff. That is very, very promising then. So looking forward, do you see there may be a day ahead of us where this stem cell therapy could replace all donor organ transplants? These results clearly support the promise. There's more work that needs sure. to be done. We're going to do another study. <laughs> Uh, uh, Poseidon DCM2 to further verify these results. But we're very excited about this. They may not completely eliminate the need for transplant, but they may prolong it. Right. You're always better off with the heart you were born with. Which could, of course, of course, and that could also cut down the donor waiting lists, which is... A it can cut down the donor waiting yeah. list and also prevent people who die on the transplant list, as you, as you indicated. Absolutely, Dr. Hare. Thank you so much for telling us about this very exciting and promising research. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you.